I'm Matt Babst. And I'm Kara Babst. We have three kids, um, Colton, who is five, and Jane and Jordan, who are twins. They are three years old, um, and they're all three born in the month of March, so they are literally two years and two weeks apart. From the very beginning, we never ever had any health issues with either girl. Just took off growing and being healthy little babies that they are supposed to be. Jaden just was not feeling so well and she was crying out in pain that her lower right abdomen and lower right back was hurting. And there were times she would be okay and then times where she would just cry out in pain that it hurt so bad. At that time, mom and I decided to take Jaden to the ER in Kearney, up to Good Sam. And um, upon taking her there, they ran some blood tests and did a urine sample and um, thinking that it could be, you know, either appendix or kidneys or bladder, something, you know. Um, they did these tests and, and everything came back fine. Everything was clear, never um, any issues there. The physician that was on call that night happened to, to pay attention to the way Jaden was breathing. And she wasn't breathing quite right. It was more of kind of a <sighs> forced breathe. And she asked me if it would be okay if she did a chest x-ray. There appears to be something on the upper part of her right lung. And she said, from the x-ray, it looks like pneumonia. Dr. Haskett was on call. And he was the one that took a look at Jaden and took a look at her x-ray. Upon looking at her x-ray, he was very, very alarmed. Um, though he didn't tell us in the very beginning, but um, that day he told us that something didn't look right with her x-ray, that it didn't appear to be pneumonia that he saw on her lung, that it was something much different than pneumonia to him. He wasn't quite sure, he couldn't quite put his finger on it, but what he did want to do is he wanted to do a CAT scan. And so he told us that he wanted to go in and go ahead and admit her to Good Sam and observe her for the evening, and then he would do it, um, order a CAT scan first thing the next morning, which would have been Monday morning. Now, all of this is happening with, I mean, just from the pain she had had on Saturday and on Friday evening, she was in a little daycare, a spring daycare program, singing and dancing on stage, just as normal and healthy as the next child. Um, and here we are now having a CAT scan ordered for first thing Monday morning. Alarmed? Yes, I was very alarmed, <laughs> not understanding what was gonna happen. Straight up 12 o'clock noon, Dr. Haskett came back into her hospital room and I knew right away something was wrong. As a mom, I had the mom feeling, knowing that something was wrong. So Dr. Haskett comes in to talk to me and to let me know that in fact, it's not pneumonia what they had found on her right lung, that it was a mass or a growth of some sort. At that point in time, my, my thinking, I just, I felt like I had been hit by a ton of bricks or been run over by a Mack truck. Where you're going to go, you're going to go to Children's Hospital in Omaha. And he said, it's a fantastic hospital. They will be able to do the diagnosis for you. And old Kara called and gave, gave me the news and me and the Colton and Jordan loaded up and came back and we all three packed bags. I asked Dr. Haskett, I said, how do we get to Omaha? When do we go to Omaha? He told me, don't worry about any of that. I'm gonna take care of it. You guys are gonna be transported out there. And as soon as I got off the phone, I lifted my head and I looked right into the eyes of who else but James Staub. And it was just such a relief because it was like somebody I knew. He transported Jaden and I out there. Um, and I was a nervous wreck. I was a ball and mess. Jaden was as calm calm as calm could be. Very relaxed, very calm. She even fell asleep part of the way. Um, I was a mess. Um, just kept thinking I wanted to talk to Angela. I did not have her phone number with me. Her phone number was back at my house and I didn't have it with me. And I just kept thinking, gosh, if I could just talk to Angela, if I could just get Angela to somehow get a hold of Angela. And it wasn't literally three minutes later, my phone rang and I answered it. She goes, Kara, this is Angela. Oh my gosh, that was huge because I mean, it was somebody that I truly wanted to talk to and somebody I knew I could open up to and she called and I'm like, okay, this is a good thing. 
the even better thing about that is that Angela and Jordan were in Omaha. Um, they had been down at her sister's for the weekend and they were actually getting ready to come back to Kearney. And they found out, I told Angela what was going on, she said, we will not leave Omaha until we make contact with you guys. Um, and James was awesome and his partner, Matt, that was with him, they were awesome. They took us up to our room. They did not leave right away. They stayed in the room to make sure everything was gonna be okay. Um, James gave me a big hug before he left and said that he would make sure that the church would be praying for us. And at that moment, I mean, I was just so scared and Jaden was scared because Matt had not yet gotten there. He had to come on his own. So he was not there yet. And so it was just me and Jaden. And we were not in our room, in, in Jaden's hospital room, more than probably seven minutes and we started being bombarded by doctors. And I'm talking doctors, surgeons, oncologists. Not not having any idea in Omaha where Children's was or anything like that. I had a neighbor come over and uh, he kind of helped me get everything packed up for Kara and I and Jaden. He just happened to have a GPS deal and uh, he programmed it and everything for children's in Omaha and when when my mother-in-law dropped us off or dropped me off in Kearney I just set the set that all up and got it programmed and got out on interstate I, I never did stop during it but there was there was probably three times. I mean, all I could do was just keep my eyes focused on the road because if I didn't, I knew I was going to have a meltdown. And I just, I mean, I just kept kept my foot in it and knew what I had to do and, and kept, kind of kept my, kept her like the light at the end of the tunnel and that's where I was going and what I was shooting for was to see her. Tuesday morning, she was in the playroom at Children's Hospital, and in the swing, um, they have a swing that they hung from the ceiling, and she had been playing with other toys and things, and she was in the swing, and Matt was behind her, pushing her, and I was standing in front of her, and, and just out of the clear blue, she looked right at me and said, Mom, we're going to get through this okay <laughs> we're gonna get through what how i mean it was just amazing that she said that and at that very moment i felt like that wasn't really jaden talking but that was god using jaden to get through to matt and myself on tuesday when they did the mri the surgeon allowed matt and i to see the mri and we actually got to see what was on her lung and we got to see that the the tumor itself this mass or growth a tumor was starting to push upward into her right lymph nodes. So we didn't know to what extent the surgery was even gonna be, and he didn't know until after he got in there. Um, I know that as we had her in the prep room, in the surgery prep room, it was a very difficult time for myself. Um, very, very difficult. There's, there's nothing worse than sitting in a, in a surgery room or doctor's office anything not knowing the unknown. Um, after about an hour in surgery the surgeon finally came out and said he was finished and he was able to do the biopsy and do what he needed to do and he gave us the results and and he said that the the tumor was in fact malignant. At that point in time I felt like I was just hit again by another ton of bricks by another Mack truck. And now the next step is to find out what type of cancer, um, where, where is it? Is it just on the lung or is it anywhere else in her body? Um, all that stuff had to yet be done. Um, but it was a very hard, um, very emotional um, time for both of us. He removed her lymph nodes and then he removed fluid off her lung. Later, I found out how much fluid he removed. He removed 400 milliliters of fluid off her right lung. 
That's a pop can and a quarter worth of fluid that was on her right lung. We found out with the diagnosis and everything, we found out that the overall treatment plan is expected to be 15 to 18 months. Um, and with all that being said, after just two rounds of um, some intense chemotherapy, um, we rescanned her just to find out what the two rounds had done. And we found out that the bone marrow sample came back clean, so it appeared that the bone marrow was clean. And then the scan came back showing that the liver was clean as well. So we are at the process now um, that she has been through five rounds of chemotherapy. And our next step is to actually do tumor removal um, where she's going to have surgery to actually have her tumor taken off of her lung. Um, it is by far going to be a major surgery. We don't know exactly how the surgery is gonna be done yet. Um, they will do a CAT scan prior to surgery for the surgeon to kind of get his game plan and how he wants to go in and, and remove that. Um, and after, um, after we do the tumor removal, um, she will then, as soon as she recovers from that, and she will recover from that in the hospital, they will not release her from children's. Um, as soon as she recovers from that, they're gonna hit her with round number six of chemo. Round number six will be the final round of chemo. We pray that it'll be the final round the rest of her life. After she recovers from round number six, we will then go back to Omaha and be at UNMC in Omaha for her stem cell transplant, which is going to be a very long stay. Um, we will be in, um, in the hospital an average of four weeks. Um, it could be as long as six, but the average is about four weeks to do um, her stem cell transplant. Um, and then we get through that and then we look at radiation. And so that's kind of um, what we are up against. That's what's in our future over the next several months. Every night before our kids go to bed, we always read them a Bible story. I happen to be reading the story of Jonah and the whale. And we were talking about Jonah and how Jonah tried running away from God. And Jaden was sitting in my lap and um, as I was reading the story, and as we were talking about that, as I read that part of the story, Jaden just turned around while she was sitting in my lap, just turned around and looked at me and had a smile on her face. And she said, Mommy, I don't run away from God. I stay with God. I just didn't know what to say. I talk about choking back tears and trying to get through the rest of the story. Um, coming from a three-year-old, just saying that out of nowhere um, was amazing. Um, and then we had um, another instance where we were reading a Bible story. Um, I don't remember which one, but again, she told me, she said, we were um, talking about God staying with us and, and watching over us. And she just told me, she said, Mommy, God and Jesus were with me in the ambulance. And that again was just completely out of nowhere and you know she was so calm in that ambulance ride so absolutely calm and at peace I, I you know I can't argue with that absolutely just to know that that a three-year-old is saying this and Jaden knows that anytime she has a CAT scan she tells me she'll tell me she'll say mommy Jesus is with me in the big donut because that's how she refers to a CAT scan being big and round it's like a big donut to her and as you know in three-year-old terms and she knows that when she goes into surgery that Jesus is right there with her in surgery and um, never leaves her and 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 she she tells me that 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 Jesus is with her in surgery and Jesus is gonna be with the doctors and to have people from our church and um, support us that I mean here we are we're just a family from church we're not you know anybody special we're not you know, we're just another family that goes to Cornerstone and we have so much support coming from Cornerstone. It's just been so amazing and so overwhelming in that fact too. We've got to be their, their rock um, as, as we know that, that God is our rock. And I know I'm speaking for myself, but God is, has been my rock from the get go. And there's days that if I didn't have him, I don't know where I'd be.